Hello world, welcome to the 102nd video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. My channel isn't meant to be a tutorial channel, but I do like to show real uses for Python automation and other codes. So in today's video, we'll be looking at what I think is a real example on how to use uh, Beautiful Soup to automate um, gathering data from a website and updating that data or updating an access database. So that seems like a very realistic thing that you'd be asked to do. So imagine you're working for a company that gets uh, it comes to a city and gets all the local info and then uses that to create data driven models or make economic decisions. And so I am just an employee in this company that gets data. So let's just imagine we're doing what most computer people do or desk pilots as we call them in the Air Force do when we're not working on a task and that's surfing Facebook. All right, and now let's imagine we get an email. All right, so Brandon, that's me. Uh, my boss knows I'm super busy, but I'm the smartest and most ridiculously good looking employee they have. So we're building an access database of all the political people in the local area. So they need me to go to this website and update each commissioner, which is like a, a different city council in Louisiana, um, by last name, first name, the district they represent, and a hyperlink to their biography. They need this ASAP of course. The future of the planet rests in my hands. Thanks. Sincerely, my loving boss. So that's a very realistic request from a boss at a company. So let's go to this website. So before you automate anything, it's good to know what they're asking for and what kind of limitations you're going to have. So this is my uh, a neighboring um, district called Caddo right here. Caddo Parish, and here are hyperlinks to each district commissioner. So what they want is the last name, the first name, the district they recommend, recommend, and then this URL. If you look in the lower left down here, you'll see that there is a URL. Okay, so first off, here's some limiting factors I already see. Non-standard name listings. So these top two people have a middle initial. So does that one. All right. This one has a comma senior. So you'll see how we get around that shortly. The next is it looks like there's pretty good uh, URL standardization. If you look in my lower left. All right. So that's pretty good. So next what you do before you use beautiful soup or selenium is you're going to right click inspect and it's going to open this up real quick. So depending on what kind of um, what kind of um, website it is, you might want to just do inspect one more time. OK, so where we are right now is right here, this class. Nav main item space secondary nav item. And in that, it has a link to the URL. But as you notice, it's not a complete link, right? So caddo.org backslash or caddo.org is not on there. So we'll have to address that. And then next, it has district one space, this little slash or hyphen slash, and then the text of their name. So that's great. We can work with that. So what we're going to do is first we're going to import requests then from BS4. So um, you'll need to pip install BS4 to get beautiful soup. And then you'll need to pip install PYODBC. And that's how we'll be working with our access database. So the first thing you do is you pass the URL they gave us, which is right here, into a variable called URL. Then you create a text and I call it HTML underscore text equals requests dot get. You pass the URL and then you just want dot text. You just want the text. And then you do a variable called soup 
soup equals beautiful soup, capital B and S. You're going to pass it the text of the HTML, and then you're going to use beautiful soup's HTML parser. And what that does is it, uh, um, beautiful soup can parse it for you, and you don't have to worry about parsing it yourself. And parsing just means identifying the beautiful soup. So let's run this real quick. And what it did was give us all of the HTML down here in the console of the website. Okay. So let's not print soup. So that's the first thing you do. So basically, we just got the HTML info from the website. Next, we're going to connect to our Microsoft Access database. And uh, we already imported PYODBC. You'll have to pip install that if you haven't already done that. Then um, I covered how to set up PYODBC in um, video 91. It's kind of complicated. And uh, so I'll leave a card here for you to click on to see why we're doing all of this. But basically, this is how you set up your... Um, connection to an access database. If you're going to use a SQL Server, you can do that, or Excel. These are the different options. So first, we're going to create a connection using pyodbc.connect. Then we're passing it this driver up here. And then we're saying that the file path, so this is the actual database here. So this is the database. I called it video 102. All right. Then we're going to do a cursor equals connection dot cursor. So to show you what our uh, database looks like. So I have this table called commissioners, right? And then I'm going to pass it the last name, first name, district, and the biography URL. That's exactly what our boss asked us to do in the email. Last name, first name, district, and a hyperlink to their biography. Now, whenever you're doing SQL, um, Excel, or connecting to it, um, you can't have spaces or else you get syntax errors. So last underscore name, or I could have just taken out the underscore and put last name. Uh, that's called camel casing, but uh, no spaces. So that's what our database looks like. It's totally simple. All right, so we created a connection to that database. Now, what we're going to do is for, I want the detail of each um, person. So for detail in soup, which is what we defined here, dot find all. So I want it to find an A, right? It's the your thing starts with A, and the class called nav main item secondary nav item. So that's what this is right here. Now, this is a good website, and it has an easy name. So you can just right click on this, go to copy, and uh, or not. So you, it, for classes, you could just copy this one right here. So it starts with A. So I want to find everything that starts with A. And I want it to find the class right here. So you could just copy and paste here and right there. So if we were to copy and paste that, and to do the syntax of beautiful soup, you would just change it to an underscore, and that's what it looks like. So for everything that starts with A in this class, I want you to get the text details, right? I want all of this in a text. So text details equals detail.text. So what it's doing is it's getting all of this information right here. District 1, all the way to Todd Hopkins. So that's the text. All right. And then I want to separate it. So I want you to separate the details and split it by this. So what does that mean? So print separated details. Uh, I can't spell. So let's see what that is uh, doing right now. Okay, so what it did was district one, then it split it at its uh, hyphen, and then the name, right? That's all this dot split method is, okay? So now I have a list of two items. This is item zero, 
This is item one. So in that, I want just the district. So district will equal separated details, the zero width index, which is right here. It's the first item in our list. So right now, this district just says district one, district two, three, four. Okay. And so like we discussed when we checked out the website, the naming conventions are not standard. Some have middle names and some don't, and one has an SR dot. So how do we get that? Well, one thing is common is everybody's first name is here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say the full name is the separated details of this first one dot split. Right. So we're going to split it again. So let's look at what full name looks like when it is split. All right, so what it did was separate into a list. So that's the zero index, the one index, the two index. So three items in this list. But this one only has two, and this one has a senior. So let's go through the logic of how to get rid of that. So now we have a split list called full name that we just printed below. The first thing I want to do is say if the length of this list full name equals three so where do we have that here here not that one not that one here and here this one with senior and here then the last name equals the full name this of the second index right so that is here so zero one two so that's the last name so unless, so if the full name, so it's going to look at the third item or the second um, 0, 1, 2. So the third item, and it's going to say, great, if the length is that big, this will be your last name, right? Now, notice that the length is real numbers. The index is by index numbers. Don't ask me why uh, Python is like that. So... Um, but if that third item is a senior, in this case, this person, then the last name will be this one right here. And I want to strip this comma. So if we look at the website, there's a comma attached to this last name, and I don't want that. Else, so everything else, the last name will just be the second item. So it's going to go through here. Okay, this, the length of this list is three items. Is it a senior? No. So this is the person's last name. What about this one? This is only two. So else this first index or the second item, that's their last name. What about here? Oh, the length of this is three items, but the last name or there's a senior in the second or in the third, um, the second index, third item. So let's not use that. Use this one. And we're going to remove this comma. Okay, and then we're going to get the URL. Now, what I had to do was add this www.cado.org because when we look at the inspection details, it only has this number and there. And it, you can't just click on that. Right, let's take out this cado.org and let's try to do that. See, it doesn't find, well, it does find it, but basically that's not a real website. So we had to manipulate that by going to caddo.org and then now what we're going to do is detail, that's here, dot get the href, right? So if you're familiar with HTML, that's the website. So it's going to go through this whole class and we just want the href. We could have done the target or the text, but we just want this href. That's what dot get is. Now we're going to finally use the PYODBC connection we made to this database. And I don't know how to explain this better than this is just how SQL, um, this is based off SQL statements. So cursor.execute, insert into commissioners. Commissioners is the table name. The column name is last name, first name, district, 
file URL. So insert into this table name these column names. Where are we going to pass into those? The values. Now we could just do this. Let's say test. And it will write in test. Well, my thing is wrong now. I'd have to do it like this. Like that. And it will do tests, but we don't want that. So you can manually put in um, strings in there. But what we want is the values are question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. And then that tells the SQL statement to look farther into the code and find the variables we want. So the first thing we want is last name, right? That We got that through this logic. Then the first name, which is the zero with or first item in our list. Then the district, the district we did at the top, which is the separated details, and that's the zero with column of that list. And then the URL of the bio, which is this string right here, cattle.org plus detail.get. Then I put a print database outside of this for loop to tell us that we're done and we can go back to searching our Facebook. So video 102. All right, so let's look in this table. See, there's nothing in here. Now, hopefully I didn't edit this while making this video and it works again. Okay. All right, it tells me that my database is updated. So let's go to video 102. Look at our commissioners, and there we go. So Hopkins, Todd, District 1, and then this is the full URL right here. So let's check if that's accurate. District 1, Todd Hopkins, and here's the URL. OK. Kenneth Epperson without the senior. District 12, here's the URL. And let's check if that's right. District 12th, Kenneth Epperson without the senior. Now let's uh, click on this. Uh, I don't think you can click on it in. Ah. Ah. There we go. Now let's see if we can. Uh, Go to that link, and there you go. It goes straight to that website. So it looks like, uh, according to my boss's email, I just saved the planet by automating um, getting information from a website and adding it to our Access database. So I will be using this um, automation for my, um, my own purposes with Shane. And so this is very value added. So this is a combination of tutorial slash what I plan to use it. If you like these videos, please leave a comment and let me know that you like my style of tutorial. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you liked the video. And thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.